Hi, I'm Chef Tom. I'm a professional chef. I've trained all over the world. I've learned all kinds of culinary secrets, and I'm going to teach them to you. Welcome to Culinary Secrets, Chef Tom. Today I'm making a stuffed meat pizza. And if you're a meat lover, this is pizza for you. This pizza weighs in almost 10 full pounds. Uh, each slice weighs a little over a pound. So let's get started. Now we're making this pizza dough. This is a little bit different than the shrimp scampi pizza dough. This dough can actually be ready within like a half hour. So if you're at home kind of on a budget, you can actually beat the pizza man. This pizza will be up and ready within 30 minutes, are ready to go. So uh, let's get started. So we have our, our bread flour, salt, uh, sugar. I'm using honey for this application. Uh, instant yeast. The reason I'm using instant yeast, instant yeast seems to be very much more forgiving than regular yeast. You don't have to proof it. You just put it in, throw it in, off it goes, and oil. This is easy dough. All you have to do is throw all the ingredients in together and off it goes. It's taking about four or five minutes to mix. The dough is about done now. The way you can tell is when it moves around, it's not sticking to the side of the bowl uh, and it's tacky and not sticky. So let's take it out and just double check this. So what I want to do with this dough is I want to knead it just a little bit to see where it's at. And just like yellow dough, this should be tacky but not sticky. And a little trick for you guys, you know, I talked about how to get this pizza up and ready in about 30 minutes. Uh, if you want to have it ready in 30 minutes, one thing you want to do is you want to use water about 100 degrees. If your water's too cold, it'll take a little bit longer to rise. It'll still rise, but you'll know it's ready when it's double in size. Also, if you want to use it right away, what you can do is freeze this. So what you want to do is uh, put it in, uh, uh, wrap it, put a little flour in it, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer, and that'll last for probably about six months. But when you want to use it, what you really have to do is put it in the refrigerator and let it come back to life. If you put it on the countertop, what's going to happen is the outside's overproof, the inside's going to proof, it'll be a disaster. So let's start messing with this a little bit. All right, so again, it's perfect. All I want to do is divide this into two, two balls and uh, knead this up a little bit. Form one. Pretty much all you want to do is form a ball. You can do up in the air like this. You can go on a table, just spin around like this. And all you, you know, as long as you get it fairly round, uh, you'd be all set. So I want to do this now. Is I want to take this, put it on my sheet pan. I want to put a little bit of oil on top of it. What the oil does, it kind of helps from uh, drying out. And then. Uh, Put your shrimp up on top of it. I kind of wrap it kind of tight. Let it sit till it doubles in size, probably around 15, 20 minutes, maybe half hour. And we'll pick it up from there. So the dough is doubled in size now and, and it's actually ready to go. So what we want to do is take this guy up. And we want to get this dough ready for action. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down on the table and start pressing this out. What you want to do is press as much air out as guy as you possibly can. And what you want to do, you want to push with this part of your fingers right here. I see a lot of people trying to push down this part of the finger and that kind of just puts holes in the dough. So when I'm pushing down here, this is the part I'm actually using. This side's done. Flip it over, get the other side. You want to get as flat as you possibly can. Uh, don't go over the edges. So you want a nice, a nice little crust on the side there. So the way we're gonna do now is we're gonna stretch this dough. Now, all kinds of ways to do this. When I was uh, 16, I used to compete at National for pizza making, spin up in there one at, one at a time, two at a time, behind the back, all that stuff. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do that. So let's kind of figure a way you guys can work with this dough. And what I've found, 
uh, from training a, a probably hundreds if not thousands of pizza makers, <clears throat> what you want to do is take your fingers on this edge of the dough and kind of, your knuckles would say, and kind of stretch it like this. And the reason why I'm doing the edge, if you go in the middle too much, it makes it way too thin and that'll make for a bad pizza. So again, I'm just taking it, stretching a little bit, taking the edge, stretching it, take it, stretching it. <clears throat> again, until I get the, the proper size, you'll get the hang of this. It'll take a little while, but it's kind of fun, kind of relaxing, kind of big. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we want to do, to make this pizza, uh, compared to the other pizzas, we want to do this on a pan, whether it's a sheet pan, sometimes you have a circle, that works really well. Uh, we definitely want to cook this pizza on a pan. This pizza needs to be cooked two times. Uh, like I said before, this pizza could weigh in at about 10 pounds by the time it's done. So, uh, you know, cooking on the peel, you know, two times right in the stone tends to burn it. So let's get this guy up. <clears throat> okay. Beautiful. Okay, so when we're putting this guy together, uh, we want to start with the pepperoni. Uh, you know, pepperoni, whenever you use any kind of pizza, flat items always go down first. You know, on this bottom layer, it's not gonna matter too much because it'll be covered by uh, another dough. But if you're actually gonna put uh, another layer, or if you put uh, meatball down first, and what happens is, like the pepperoni get edged up on the uh, meatball and the air gets underneath it, it tends to burn. We don't want that to happen, so. Uh, but down here, it's gonna be okay. So let's pepperoni this guy up. That's pretty good for the bottom. Now what I wanna do is we wanna put a little bit of sausage down. And when I say a little bit, of course I mean a little bit. How's that? Uh, that's not enough yet. Let's fill this guy up. Again, this is a meat lover's pizza. You want to put more pepperoni down? Put more pepperoni down. Some people want to put linguiça sausage in here. Uh, any kind of sauce you want uh, will work. You want to put different kinds of meatballs in there. Knock yourself out, won't hurt my feelings at all. Yeah, meatballs now. So, just a little bit of meat on the first layer. Again, this is just the first layer on this pizza, so. Ah, I think that's enough. But now we gotta put a little bit of cheese on top too. <clears throat> cheese kinda holds it in place when you go to bite it. It doesn't sip all over the place on you. All right, <clears throat> that's good for the first layer. Let's get the second layer going. So same thing again. Pushing the dough down. Uh, this pizza here is a classic New England pizza. This is actually a pizza that's very well known in Connecticut. Uh, stuffed meat pizza, you know, Connecticut's really world known for pizza making, which a lot of people don't know, but this is a very classic pie there, along with a shrimp scampi pizza and along with a white clam pizza. So, when I start doing this, I'm gonna show you a little more advanced technique. Can't throw up too high, catch the hood. But, so this is how you do it when you really get good at making the pizzas. So what you want to do with this now, I got to make it big enough to cover that guy. So I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit more. Make sure I get the sausage and a little bit back from the edge. And now I'm going to drop this guy down. Not bad, huh? So what we want to do now is we want to kind of crimp the edges and this is a kind of interesting technique. What you want to do is turn and squeeze, turn and squeeze, turn and squeeze, turn and squeeze. So you kind of have like a, a rope thing going on the edge. You know, if you can't do it, it's okay. Don't worry about it. The pizza still can taste good. So twist, pinch, twist, pinch, and you're really pushing down with your thumb. The thumb is actually making these little marks in it. We get to the corner, you know, it might be a little bit tough here, but it's okay. Keep pushing on with it. It's 
So now we have the first layer of pizza. I want to put a little hole in the middle, let some of the steam out. I want to cook this in a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes. What you're looking for is you want to cook the whole pizza, you just want to kind of golden brown. So we're going to take this, chuck it in the oven. Okay, so now uh, the pizza's about halfway done. You see it's being turned light golden brown. Uh, that's perfect for what we want. Let's talk about this for a little bit. You know, if you did decide to do this for a Super Bowl party, for a big party, you could probably do like uh, three or four of these uh, up to this point and put them on a sheet pan and let it sit for like a day. It won't cause any problems. Uh, once you're ready to go, let's finish the guy off. Remember, there's no sauce on the bottom layer. If you put sauce on the bottom layer, it'll sog out. So top layer, put some sauce. Uh, a lot of times since it's served, uh, people actually put a side of sauce with it also. So here's our second layer. Nice sauce. And I'm just using a pretty much straight tomato sauce. You know, everyone you use at home, uh, feel free to do it. Uh, light layer of cheese. You know, on this layer, you just wanna make sure the cheese kind of holds things in place. Pretty big pizza though, huh? Pepperoni. Just start putting these guys down. If you like pepperoni, you want to do double pepperoni, triple pepperoni. Go for it. You're eating it. It's pretty good. Remember, this is your pizza. You can do anything you want with it. I've done a lot of pizza like these. I put like uh, ricotta cheese, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese in the middle, and put some like uh, chicken and broccoli that came out. Are really nice too. So when you sell the pizza, it just doesn't have to be meat pizza. You can do any combination. So now I gotta put a little more sausage on there. I know it's a lot now, but wait. This is another reason why I gotta cook it twice. The sausage here has been cooked, cubed, make it nice and easy. You would never want to use raw sausage with this. That'd be a that'd kind of be a bad day. I don't think it cook all the way through. I'm gonna we'll finish up this guy with meatballs. Hungry yet? Look at that. Of course, gotta put a little more cheese on there since we're watching our calories on this pizza. All right, what do you think? Ready to go? I have a little more. Let's put this back in the oven. Okay, so my pizza's done. Uh, nice golden brown, cheese a little bit golden brown. Let's weigh this guy out. I already uh, zed the scale out, so ooh, let's see what this guy looks like. <clears throat> Where are we at? So 11 and a half pounds, almost 12 pounds of pizza. Not bad, huh? <clears throat> when I first started doing this pizza, we had a deal <clears throat> that if you could eat one piece of this pizza and drink a 32 ounce Coke, you have it for free. Uh, right now, it seems that people need a little more. I probably have the two slices, but I think one slice of average person will knock you out. Let's cut this up. So, ooh, oh my gosh. Okay. So, what do you think? Let's, uh, let's cut this guy open. I'll cut you a slice. You know, normally I cut this into eight slices, so I'm gonna cut this just like that for today. So let me know, send me an email. Let me know if you're thinking of take the Chef Tom challenge and eat this whole piece. Oh, let me get this, uh, these little guys that fall off there. So that's one piece of stuffed meat pizza. Thinking to do it, let me know.